In the last video, we talked about how to create or start a client site in your account and why. So if you haven't watched that yet, definitely check that out before we move on, because today I'm going to talk about how to transfer that website to your client. It's going to be quick and easy. <laughs> Don't worry, not a long tutorial today. Before we dive into that though, if we haven't met before, my name is Caitlin. I run Launch the Damn Thing. I am a Squarespace website educator and designer. I've been in the design industry for a long time, so I can't wait to share my expertise with you today. <laughs> Let's dive in. Inside your Squarespace account, the settings have been moving around a little bit as Squarespace has been reorganizing their main menu. So instead of directing you to exactly where it lives, I'm going to show you the quick way to find it no matter where it is. <laughs> so if you press the question mark or backslash key on your keyboard, as you can see here, pressing that on your keyboard searches the menu from anywhere. This is a search through the menu, not through your website. If you click in the search field and you start typing permissions, you should be directed here automatically. And you can see that that currently lives within settings under the website section under permissions. It may not always live there. So what we want to do, you have two options, invite contributor or add basic author. Basic author is going to have very limited um, permissions, so you probably don't want to use that unless that's literally what you intend to do. So for a client and handing a website off to them, you'll want to invite them as a contributor. When you click that button, you'll have a pop-up where you can give them a name as the contributor. We will give that person administrative permissions. That actually toggles on everything underneath it, as you can see here. So one toggle will control the rest of them, although you can turn this off and granularly select which options you want people to have. But since we're gonna transfer ownership to the client, it makes sense to start with this. So then we'll click invitation or invite and you can see the pending invitations that have been sent. This is the second try that I've done for this tutorial. This is the link to the invitation in case they can't find the email. <laughs> and from here, you can adjust their permissions if you want to. They should, in the meantime, get an email from Squarespace, which will look something like this. It should have the subject line contributor invitation from and then your name as the account holder. Uh, that's sending the invitation. And then in the email itself, it should say hi, and then their name, whatever name you gave them. And then it says, so-and-so, me, has invited you to contribute to whatever the website name is with administrator permissions. Click accept invitation, the button below, to create your account or learn more about accepting a contributor invitation. You do want to stress that when they click this button, they should be logged in to the account you sent the invitation to, because ultimately you do not want them to be a contributor on multiple websites and all of them be in different Squarespace accounts. The goal of this is to have sort of a consolidated dashboard where any website they have permissions to see shows up in the same dashboard in one centralized Squarespace account. So when they click accept invitation, most likely it skipped the screen for me during this process, but every other time I've always seen a screen that says, do you want to continue using the email address that you are currently logged in with in Squarespace as a whole? So you click yes or no if that pop-up pops up. And then from the inside of Squarespace, this should be the view for the client that I just invited myself to. <laughs> so to double check that, let's go to permissions again. Now you can see that I have added myself as an administrator. <laughs> Administrators or people that have been added as a contributor can't edit their own permissions. So for example, if I add the client with billing only permissions, basically they won't be able to reassign their permissions to administrator instead. I have to do that for them because I am the one that invited them. And the same is in reverse. Once we transfer ownership, they control our permissions to the website, which is why it's very important to do this step at the end after you've received payment in full and it's ready to launch the website. So if we go back to permissions, we can see the owner is me as the designer and the contributor is me as the client. <laughs> What you want to do when it's time to transfer ownership to the client after they've accepted their invitation back in the main permissions area as the owner of the account, I also have this option, transfer ownership. If I click that, a little pop-up will come up. It will ask me to log back into my account just to verify that yes, I am indeed the owner. I will click continue 
And now I get a second pop-up that asks who I want to transfer ownership to. In this case, there's only one other contributor in this website, and so that's the person that I would pick. If there were multiple contributors, you would pick the right contributor to transfer ownership to. So I'll just click Caitlin, and I will click Continue and the ownership will be transferred to that contributor. Once the transfer is started, it can't be canceled or undone. If I click confirm, now the owner by default has been switched after I designated that the ownership should transfer to the client. And now I, in my account, well, as the original owner, am now an admin. So if I click that, I can see that I still have admin permissions to the site. Again, once you have let go of your ownership, you have no control over your own permissions. <laughs> Flip back to their view. Okay, now, so I can see that I, as the client, am the owner of the website. The contributor is now the designer of the website. And as the owner, I can now control her permissions. <laughs> so basically, I can turn her admin off. If you turn it off and save the change, that just means basically that they are still a contributor, but they just have no current permissions. So they can always toggle this off and leave you in the queue, so to speak. And if they ever need you, they can come back in here and turn it on. That's just one extra step. Most of my clients don't bother with turning my permissions off because I don't interfere with their content and they like the safety net of having me able to hop in and help them in an emergency. <laughs> but you do you. Uh, the one thing that you can also do from this view as the owner is to remove permissions or remove the contributor altogether. They are two separate things. If you just remove the permissions, it's basically like toggling this off. If you remove the contributor as a whole, that just removes them from the website entirely and they no longer have access to it at all. It won't show up in their account. They can't look at the dashboard. They can't see analytics. They can't do anything with it, right? Okay, so that covers how you can remove their permissions if you need to, uh, or how you can direct them to remove your permissions if they want to know. But from your main dashboard area, inside your account, there are also permissions that you can handle here very basically. So for example, if I wanted to remove uh, my client's permissions, for example, or myself from a website, I can click this ellipsis. I can quickly get to permissions from here. But if I were to want to remove my permissions or my access to an account, I can remove myself. I can't adjust the level of permissions that I have access to, but I can remove myself as a contributor altogether. I would just go to the ellipsis on the website in my Squarespace account dashboard, and I would click remove me, and that would literally remove it from my dashboard. They can always add me back, but that would remove it from my access point so that you don't have lingering access to something if you don't want to have it. <laughs> so that's basically it. I told you there wasn't a lot to it. It's a very simple and easy process. Basically, the objective is to give them access or permission to the draft site that you created. Once they have permissions or access to that website, then you are able to transfer ownership to any of your contributors that you have invited. Once you transfer ownership, they are now the owner and you are by default the admin, typically, that's been my experience, and they can control your level of permissions. You cannot control the level of your own permissions. They will have to do that for you. But again, you can remove yourself if you want to not be attached to the website on a long-term basis. There's not really a best practice for how long to stay. That's totally up to you and the relationship you have with your client and whether or not they trust you to let you hang on. <laughs> Um, but you find out what works best for you. But I do think it's a good practice to when you explain this process to your client, which doesn't take very long. In fact, I just recorded a video where I show them how to do this, especially if it's a VIP day and they have to give me contributor access to their website for the day. It's a very simple process. Two or three minute video should suffice, even for a long winded person like myself. <laughs> But the best practice when you're explaining this process to a client is to say, if you leave me on as an admin, that's up to you. I can remove myself. I can't adjust my own permissions 
Only you can adjust the level of permissions I have access to. And then if you want to stay, you can give them a benefit, such as maybe every January, you go through all of the websites in your dashboard and Squarespace and change that pesky little date in the copyright line in their footer or something like that. Uh, so that's a small perk you could offer. And also, of course, having easier access to the website when there is an issue. There's really not money issues, but I think the peace of mind they get from having us be able to jump in first thing on a Monday morning if they've submitted a support ticket over the weekend, it just gives them peace of mind to know that you can do that and they don't have to go through extra hoops to get you in there. So that's kind of how I handle it. I just like to explain that once they have gone through this process, they have the control after they've paid for the website. So they feel like um, this is not a sneaky way that I am retaining control. I don't actually want control of their website. <laughs> I don't want to manage it long term. Uh, so anyway, that's how I like to handle it. I hope that was helpful for you. If you are excited and had an aha moment or you didn't know it worked that way or thought it would be more complicated, leave a comment below. I'm so curious to know how you thought this would actually work versus how it does actually work. And if you want to learn more about my client processes and tips for two-week processes, VIP days, um, all the things. I have an actual playlist that is specific to client processes and tips. So make sure you check that out as well. <laughs> That's all I have for you today. I will see you in the next video. Bye.